The Lord be with you. This morning, we are going to sing our gradual hymn 249 in our ancient and modern hymnal. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Filled with messages from thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a might would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every part as thou shalt choose. Every part as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne, it shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet is treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. Ever only all for thee. Let us pray. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father and our God, we give you thanks and honor. We glorify your name. We lift your name on high. You are the Lord of the harvest. You are the Lord who have called and have sent out. And indeed, even today, you calls and sent. We pray, Father God, the Lord of the mission of evangelism, of the mission of salvation. We pray that through your word, we will be renewed in our relationship with you. We will be encouraged not to give up in the midst of pandemics, persecutions, and any challenges of life. We pray that we will be healed through it by getting the peace that surpasses all understanding from your word. We pray, Father God, that indeed we will be humbled to know that you are God and that you reign, you reign over all. You are still God in control. We pray that, Lord God, through your word we will be pruned of all impurities and unrighteousness so that we will be able to, to be fit and worthy 
of our callings. Purge us from the defilement of sin and make us worthy of that our calling. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The reading for this Sunday morning is taken from the book of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 24. A student is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a student to be like his teacher, and the servant like his master. If the head of the house has been called Bezebul, how much more the members of his household. So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed. There is nothing hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both the soul and the body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet none, not one of them, will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. And even the very hair on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worthy more than many sparrows. However, whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against his, her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemy will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. In this passage, starting from verse 1 of the chapter 10 of the book of Matthew, we got a record of Jesus sending out his disciples. He sends the 12 out to do mission, to do evangelism, to preach the good news. And after he has told them what they should do and what they should not do and where to go, now starting from the verse that we have just read of chapter 10 verse 24, he now tells them of what to expect. And this is what he says, verse 24. A student is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a student to be like his teacher, and for a servant to be like his master. If the head of the house has been called Bezebub, how much more the members of his household. The Lord Jesus Christ is the good and great shepherd. The shepherd who does not ask us to do what he did not do. He will not ask us or demand from us things that we cannot handle. In fact, everything that he asks of us, he first has demonstrated it by his way of life, by his teaching, and by his ministry. To us, as an example. 
And here he says, a student is not greater than his teacher, and a servant is not greater than his master. Jesus is actually teaching us that if we are up to follow him, if we are to go into his footstep, we have to be prepared to enjoy that which he has enjoyed. We know that the Lord Jesus was persecuted. He was scorned. He was detested by many and deserted by many. The Lord Jesus Christ was called all sorts of names to the extent that he was even called Bezebel, the prince of demons, the devil himself. So Jesus is preparing his disciples that whoever wishes to follow the Lord Jesus Christ must be prepared to endure hardships that the Lord himself have endured. The same treatment that the Lord has been given or received is the same treatment that you and me will receive by following him, by giving our lives to him. There will be that time when the good will be regarded as evil, when the truth will be regarded as poison, when honesty and integrity will be regarded as unwelcome, because this is what has happened in the life and ministry of Christ. Therefore, we have to be prepared for that. So the Lord says, be prepared. If the head of the household is called Bezebel, what more of the members of his household? If the Lord could be persecuted, if the Lord could be shunned, if the Lord could be beaten, if the Lord could be insulted, if the Lord could be humiliated, what more of you and me who are in his footstep? We have to be prepared to endure such scorns. But he says, Take courage, because verse 22 says, All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. The Lord says, take courage if you don't give up, if you don't get discouraged, if you don't slack in your work with the Lord, and you endure to the end. Indeed, your reward is secure. Your reward is secure. Verse 26 says, Yes, you will meet people who will be disagreeing with you, who will be hating you, who will call you all sorts of names, who will try to humiliate you, who will try to label you with things that are not there just because you love the Lord, just because you love the truth, just because you are honest, just because you, you, you lead a life of integrity. There will be people who call you cowards. There will be people who call you you know, confused. There will be people who call you sick. There will be people who will label you with whatsoever. But verse 26 says, do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. I tell you that what I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What I whispered in the ear, proclaim on the roof. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both the soul and the body in hell. The Lord is telling us that the, the primary intentions of the devil and his cohorts is to suppress the truth and the message of the gospel, is to suffocate those who love God and who love the truth. It is to make sure that those who love God and are following him in spirit and truth have found unfit. But the Lord is saying, look, the, the reality of your faith is found when you are able to keep your head afloat amidst the storms. I repeat that. 
the genuinity of your faith in Christ is demonstrated and manifested when you are able to keep your head afloat amidst the storm. The test of tea can only be felt when it is in hot water. And the truth of how in how deep connected and how genuine your faith in the Lord is when you are able to keep clinging on him even in a situation where everyone starts to doubt and you hang in there and you hang in there he says do not be afraid do not be afraid of them he is actually saying you are not going to face an easy life as a Christian. You are going to go through storms, you are going to go through fires, you are going to go through trials and temptations, but blessed is the one who endures to the end. But where will, this, where will these uh, trials come from? He says, do not be afraid of them. Who are these? These are people. Verse 17 says, be on guard against men. Be on guard. Watch out against the people. That's what Jesus is saying. Watch out against people. In other words, the devil will use people. Such people can be members of your household. Such people can be members of your church. Such people can be members of your choir. Such people can be your relatives. But watch out, watch out. What is he saying? Your persecutors will be people. And he's saying, avoid dangerous people. Watch out for men. Avoid dangerous people. Be careful. Bad company corrupts good character. Be careful what you do and what you say to people. Be careful with those whom you freely confide in. Be careful. Be careful. That's what Jesus is saying. Remember Jesus was betrayed with a kiss by a close friend. Watch out. The devil is planting his seeds everywhere to make sure that he have a good chance to attack you and to, to make you fall. But let's continue. The Lord says, do not be afraid of people. Do not worry about what others say. Do not worry about who associate with you and why. Do not worry about losing somebody because you love the truth. Do not worry about being rejected because of your faith in the Lord. Because be afraid of the one who is able to kill both the soul and the body in hell. People can, can do whatever they can do, but only God who is able to save, who is able to contemn. Now, verse 29 says, are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet none of them will fall to the ground. The Lord is telling us that of course silver and gold is of value, but we are worthy more than anything else to God to the extent that he is prepared to give his one and only begotten son to die for me and to die for you. The Lord will do everything possible to protect those who trust in him without wavering. However temptation you face, however challenges you go through, however hot the water you are treading in, do not give up your hope in the Lord because you are worthy more than anything else to the extent that even the hair on your head are are known, are numbered, that the Lord is still in charge, the Lord is still in control, and he will never forsake those who put their hope in him, never and never 
forsake those who love him. He says, whosoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. There are people who feel threatened by the systems, by the authorities, and by the people of this world to the extent that they suppress the truth deep in their heart, to the extent that they choose to remain silent where they supposed to speak. But the Lord have already told us that you will face trials. You will be hated by people. The false Christian will hate you. Who are these people? These are people who claim to have some form of religion but denies it is power. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 5 tells us about those people who have some form of religion who acknowledge that there is God somewhere but they fail to, to submit to his authority. Who come to church to to the place where they can worship the Lord, yet not with their body, who will identify to you as a brother or a sister in the Lord, but is a fake Christian, is the devil incarnating in that person. But he says, do not be afraid, speak boldly, whatever it may cost, if it will cause your death, but you die because of the truth, you are blessed because your reward is secure. You will be threatened by the people in authority. People in authority will also hate you for condemning corruption. If you say you are a corrupt minister in the government and you need to repent, then people will hate you. They will say, what are you doing in politics? Leave politics to politicians. But it is for me because I live in the light. The light of the world, Jesus Christ, is in me. And I am seeing what the ordinary person cannot see. And I have to condemn that which is dark so that life, light and darkness cannot mix. Don't shut your mouth. Condemn what is not right. Corruption is wrong and it should stop. Abortion, like today, we have people even, you know, who are propagating for abortion. Some people in, in, in governments, they want to support this. Some people who are members of our churches, they want to support the motion of abortion. Some people who are members of our families, they want to support abortion. Some people who are members of our societies, but that is wrong. That is wrong altogether. And we don't have to keep shut because the Lord says, if you keep shut, whoever fails to acknowledge me in front of men, I will not also acknowledge him before my father. But if you do acknowledge me, if you stand for the truth, the truth that will set you free, you will be free indeed. And I will indeed also defend you and your case before my Father in heaven. He continues to say, do not suppose, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father and a daughter against his mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemy will be the members of his own household. God is not propagating for violence here. Jesus here is not saying it is good to hate one another. He is not, he is not talking about division that will come about intentionally, but he is actually saying, I have come to bring separation between the Christian believers and the non-believers. The mission of Jesus Christ, the mission of Jesus Christ, the faith in me the, that is placed in Christ will now be able to differentiate me from those who do not have the faith. Wow, what is he saying? He is saying our devotion to Jesus Christ must exceed our devotion to any other relationship. It doesn't matter how naturally 
tied together we are. If my father or my mother or my sister is not in the Lord, is not my sister or my brother in Christ, and that is clear. He is saying our devotion to Christ must exceed every other devotion to every other relationship. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how closely knitted together by nature or by biology. That is what he means. Because if you receive Christ and your brother did not receive Christ, you are now the light and he is in the dark. And light and darkness do not mix. There is no relationship between the temple of God and the temple of, of Baal. But it doesn't mean deceit them. It doesn't mean have nothing to do with them. But it means pray for them. It means pray for them all the time. It means evangelize to them. Even when they don't want to listen. Even when they don't understand you. Because you are not speaking the same language. When we have Christ in us, we are a new creation altogether. And those who are still in the dark, they are in the realm of death. And they cannot see what we see. They cannot enjoy the life that we enjoy. The same eye, the same thing that we are looking at, we will not see the same image because we are looking through the lens of faith and they are looking through the lenses of the flesh. They will be looking for prosperity and the temporary peace of this world and material prosperity. But we know that we have peace that surpasses all human understanding in the Lord. In the Lord. Anyone who loves his father, he says, or mother, or brother, or sister, or daughter, more than I, more than I, is not fit, is not fit. He's saying our devotion to Christ must exceed every other devotion to any other relationship that we have in, with, 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 with the world around us. Brothers and sisters, he says, Anyone who is not ready to take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. But whoever finds his life, he will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Jesus is saying to be a Christian is not a walk in the park. You will be attacked. You will be... <laughs> You will be tempted. You will face challenges. Just that your faith is being tested to be found strong and worthy than, than the silver and gold that is refined in, in, in fire. You might be going through tough time now. And you may be starting to doubt the presence of God with you. Is it the corona pandemic that is sweeping over the world that is making you to think, where is God? Is it a sickness in your body that is making you to think, God has abandoned me? Is it disagreement between you and your family members that is making you to think, oh, that I have given my life to Christ, but I'm still suffering? Is it the unemployment that is right there the Lord says, what does it profit you to, to gain the whole world and forfeit your, your place in heaven? Therefore, remain in the Lord. Remain steadfast. Your reward is set and your reward is certain. It will never, it will never be revoked from you because he who endures to the end will be saved. I repeat verse 22. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Stand firm. Remain in the Lord. Your reward is, is, is sure, is secure, is secure. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are a faithful God. You said you will not leave us, you will not forsake us. You said whatever trouble we may endure in, you are still in charge. And if we don't give up, our reward 
Yeshua. Give us courage, give us renewed passion, and give us also wisdom to know, to know that you are, you are sovereign and you are glorified through us in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the peace of God which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and mind in the knowledge and the love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you now and forever. Amen. Until next Sunday, keep sanitizing, keep washing your hands, keep observing social distance, keep praying, pray more than before, keep trusting in the Lord, and indeed we shall overcome. Shalom. Bye-bye.